Cool it like a pro. You know what I'm saying? Do it on the bad bro. Let's go. Hey. All the bad, all the bad decisions I've made when this song was out. Bro, when this came out, like 98? Eight? Shout out to Missy. I can still see that Adidas up on the table. Missy and Timberland. Missy and Timberland low, was like low Maloney key, they hold, Stockton. They hold, they hold down a, 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 a percentage of our youth. Yeah, and I, and, yeah. And I, I, I love, I love to treat them as, as, as separate because I feel like, I feel like when we say Missy and Timberland, it like, takes away from Missy. Missy like, yeah, yeah. Missy. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Oh, Missy, oh, Missy is standalone. Mm-hmm. Missy like, people standalone. don't know how she was writing hits and all that stuff. Yeah, she was definitely writing hits. When you find out she was, uh, you know, literally the producer on the Benjamins, all about the Benjamins, you like, yo, like yeah. Missy. Missy was cold. Man. Yes. Missy can was cold. Get, can get in the- and then, you know what? It, it's crazy because she came up in that era where uh, it was so shallow and they thought she wouldn't succeed, you know, because of her looks. You know what I'm saying? And they thought, yep. like, man, she's we have all these pretty women now, you know, you didn't go drop her. But then she flipped it. She came out and low key to me, I think she did it like as a joke. Like she made herself even more ugly. You know what I mean? Like with the, with the big garbage <laughs> bag and the insinuation, uh, like big lips and big eyes. You know, in the videos they always got big and stuff. But shout out to Missy, she did it, flipped it, and it was dope. Up jumps the boogie. Oh, the boogie man. jumps to me. Yeah, yeah I think cool. I I, I, I think even yeah. at that time when you look at at, at rap, right, and Missy, rap. People always got this, I feel like, an inflated, like, memory of female rappers at that time. Mm-hmm. Because you, you look at the people that was out, the the Trinas of the world, the Angie Martinez and, and shit like that, the Queen Pins, and it's like... <laughs> Queen Pins. <laughs> fam, listen, Missy was, she was essentially, you know, top three, and she had the competition. She yeah, had yeah, Foxy it, and Kim, and Kim yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and I think both of the the them would tell you when it came to being an all around artist, Missy was the best. Yeah, yeah. 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 And people and people, you know, don't real like you said, like people don't realize like that level of female rapping competition back then was like, like yeah. Foxy Brown wasn't no slap. Say what you want to say about her hearing right now. <laughs> no, <laughs> you probably got to do sign language. Right, you probably got to say language, no comment. But like, China doll Foxy, yeah, get get most men some go. Quick question, quick question. Since you know uh, Missy, we, was, Missy was so well rounded, super duper fly with a Miss Education. Are you asking what's better? <laughs> what I'm listening to more? What's better? Can you even compare those two? I don't think you can compare Why those not? two. You I feel like I feel like if they want to, I still I still treat Miss Education like an R and B album, no matter how much rapping was on there. Okay, cool. Cause that's how I feel about Drake. Like no matter, no matter, it's a pop album. I don't, I don't care. 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 And I'm I'm not gonna use it to take a swipe at Lauren Hill. That's that's I guess I'd say that. I'm <laughs> Thanks. Not sure. Thanks. Cause and Lauren was w- the best though. At what? At what? I I love Lauren Hill. You love her one For album. For what? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> song. When I was growing up, I probably listened to only two songs. Yeah. That's yeah. all I know about. But that was about it. <laughs> Let, let's let's yeah, introduce the guest now, so people man. can you give so give him. I so our you. listeners can give <laughs> our poor get an Miss, idea, right? Our yes. poor Miss Guy. Our poor Miss Guy to guest. Introduce yourself. Well, uh, yeah, introduce yourself. All right. Um, my name is Aaron Jones. Um, I'm a high my high school student. I go to San Rita High School, and um, I'm a poetic rapper. Oh, oh man, what grade are you in? I am a junior. Okay, dope. Okay. So I play football. I'm 6'4", 306. I was gonna, I was <laughs> gonna say he get a whole black planet <laughs> he get, he get. bio now. He, he really did. <laughs> so I'd be on Snapchat at Saint Rita linebacker. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So we 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 were fortunate enough to have Aaron at one of our sessions at the Z Summit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um and and it, and it was funny because we were doing it and we were talking about it and Aaron was you know he was he was definitely receptive and next thing I know he's like can I come up he do something and I think we asked some other questions and next thing I know he he just came up mm-hmm. and he just spit like and you know even just in life and and being in that position myself like it 
it takes a lot to just come up and just spit. Especially in front of your peers. Right. You know? In front yeah. of your peers. Like, it's it's rough, boy. Like, real rough. He just came up there and spit. He spit one, and he was like, yo, I got yeah, another I one more. in the chain. Well, I got yeah, more. I got What's ready. up? I, on the, deck. The like, notebook is filled, baby. <laughs> which one? Which I want to hear. I got some for every season. <laughs> so, now, so now our listeners hear how young Aaron is and why he would make such misguided statements like Lauren Hill was oh, the best. Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be a lot of that happening. I know a little bit about. I know a lot. I, mean, I ain't gonna say a little bit, but I know a good amount about rap and hip hop, and I got my own opinion about it. Okay, yeah. no, I'm gonna protect it. So it's yeah, protect right. it. There, there we go. There you go. Yes. There we go. Don't, don't, let, don't let us shake your confidence. That's right, is, right. That is the key. Protect it. Pot- protect it at all costs. Lord, but we Hill will not only get had it. one album. That's Just, it. That's bro. fact. That man, you know what I'm saying. And she. Hey. And she's late. But you know, see, I. But you know, a lot of this generation, he got. He probably got a lot of friends named Zion. So, <laughs> you know, because that's that generation. Like, all, everybody our age was naming their kids Zion because of Lord Hill. Man, mm. I'm, I'm happy I don't know no Zions. So. I'm so happy. I, don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say, matter of fact, do you know any Zions? Not at no, all. Thank you. I sir. figured he did. <laughs> Thank you. I figured he did. Nah, oh that was God, it's, it's, all the Zions probably on the East Coast, like <laughs> East Orange, East New Jersey. Right. I think Zion's would be more on the West Coast because you know California people and stuff. Yeah, but you know Lauren Hill, you know she held man, that down. Yeah, like, she was. She's yeah. from New Jersey, but <laughs> New York claims everything that's East Coast. So true. <laughs> you know, if you're on the East Coast, you from Sun? New York. You know, Sun? what I'm saying from this borough, right? That, yeah, I, you know what I'm saying. Get it together, be word life. So, Tim's Aaron, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Aaron Aaron was definitely like, yo, I want to come to the studio. I want to check it out. Um, I, I and, and I was excited to have him. I wish we could have recorded the actual Z summits and put those out because I was like, man, we had a lot going on in both of the sessions. Yeah. And we talked about all type of stuff from dating and, and how you perceived. That was wild. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, let me start off with this. Let me ask uh, Aaron a question. What comes was, Uncle Aunt. What was your perception of us Like after you left the yes. summit? Like, uh, like your perception, I guess, like your friends after you all had left and like, you know, huddled and talked to talked about the summit or whatever okay i mean i think with me and my parents we was all like um when we first walked in it was like oh man what is all these old dudes like talking <laughs> about <and stuff." laughs> look old, old dude old, i mean old, i mean old, age old. is just a number to me it's like no, your knowledge scared. can range from whatever from whatever age but yeah. it was like all right i'm gonna take whatever they have to um teach me and i'm gonna um, use it and then when y'all started talking i was like hey they real they they, they ain't fake they, they legit real and i was like <laughs> All right, I gotta start spitting. So I did that, <laughs> and y'all were like enjoyed it and everything. And then my parents was like, "Oh crap, he can rap." I was like, "Oh yeah, I can." But, um, <laughs> it was like afterwards, we were all like, "Hey man, I wish we could do that again. I wish we can like come up and watch the show again or something like that." And um, it was real cold. I mean, like with that dating stuff, it was wild because what the, the three dudes y'all chose, it was just they they were didn't date. <laughs> 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 there we go. They had no common out. sense with that. It was like I have a girlfriend, but uh. I do like they know the chicks. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember that comment. I was like, oh, yeah, we we try to like he was risking it all. He was risking it all. Then the girls they came up and they were so defensive and it was yeah. just like, how come we can just all have like an open discussion about this? How come we all just can't be open? But nah, Cause everybody Solange, got real mad real quick. Yeah, Solange <laughs> album was hot at the time, so <laughs> you know they were still for us by us. But yeah, that was like you know something. I'm gonna be real. The Z Summit was the first time, like even with me working in education as a custodian, that was my first time being in a setting where I seen so many kids with their heads screwed on the right way. Mm-hmm. Even even the kids who did it, like it was a couple kids who was like, "Hey man," but they know why they did it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the kids who was like, "I really don't want to go to the school I'm at. I'm being forced to be at the school I'm at. That's why I feel a certain way. That's why I'm not comfortable going to school and all that." And I was like, "See." That's a sep- you know I ain't saying it's like be that way but I can understand where they're coming from like kids who just bad for the sake of being bad I'm not with that but I can understand for kids say hey man you know what I'm saying I, I didn't feel like going to school because this one teacher gets on my nerves all the time and then I got that class second period I can understand that but but overall it was hey it was real dope man I do that summit four times a year five <laughs> times a year if they ask me you know what I'm saying I, I never have a problem talking to, to the youth so anytime they want me I'm there. What, what it was a, 
a company, uh, not a company. Link the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm part of Link Unlimited. Link Unlimited. Yeah, Link Unlimited. Yeah, yeah. I think it was probably like four of the scholarships. We were the most people that went. Yeah. And um, I always, um, I'm really appreciative and grateful of my um scholarship and everything they done for me. They the ones that pushed me to write down my poems and stuff. And then now I'm supposed to be um trying to manifest them into songs and um stuff like that. They the ones that pushed me to go into economics and business, to go into more writing and stuff like that, writing my own stories. I think without them. <clears throat> I think without them, I would definitely be going to, like, a public school because, like, they gave me, of course, they gave me money or whatever because it's a scholarship. But Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's way more than that. And it's, like, I got big shoulders, too. And it's, like, I can definitely say big shoulders. I go to one meeting a year, and it's, like, oh, I'm supposed to just do this. I don't even know who these people are, who's helping Mm -hmm. me, who's supposedly giving me money and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. When you go to Link, it's way different. They, um... They like they manifest the real skills, like leadership skills in you, and how to um, sell yourself to colleges and businesses and stuff like that. And that's what I really do uh, love. Yeah, I think I think. Um, how did you How did you get involved? How did you hear about Link Unlimited? I heard about Link when I was in grammar school, and um, I remember because my mom was mad at me because it was another scholarship, and I didn't meet the deadline for that. I was like, Oh, yeah, I was supposed to tell you, but I didn't tell you. <laughs> but um, so she was like, You definitely doing Link. So um, it was probably about twenty of us in the class who um applied to it i was the only one i got it though oh wow so it was like oh well, yeah, well of course aaron got it. i was like nah it's good but, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was wild though because it's like i went there i was like in that summer we had to go to summer school i'm like why do i have to go to summer school and it was like it's so fundamental and helpful learn how to study better learn how to um, fully pay attention and focus on your classes definitely it helps you with um learning aspect too rather than just like longer um your life and career wise too it definitely helps out with school. They always are encouraging you and supporting you stuff. But, um, yeah, I definitely heard it from my grammar school. I applied. It was um, a rigorous thing. Had to write, like, three essays and had to go to an um, interview. And the whole thing is that if you made it past the ap- application, then you have to go to an interview. Most likely, everybody missed out on the interview. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember everybody was, like, talking probably, like, 20 minutes or something. And then um, I was in there for about, like, an hour. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm trying to sell myself the best I can. And I'm like 14. I'm like, I'm trying to do the best I can. But I say, right. grown folks don't even be in the interview for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> you run out of stuff to talk about. Hey, give me seven <laughs> minutes, Jack. If you don't want me for this job, let me know right away. <laughs> <laughs> but that's dope, man. I, I just, I think, like, we ain't even had those kind of chances. There was no one coming to our schools offering scholarships or saying that, you know, do this and do that to try to push forward and we had none of that man we, it was just like rough it was like hey man you better pull yourself up from your own britches son you know what i mean yeah so i'm i'm like that's that's one thing with me too i'm always for anyone trying to help out the youth and like that program y'all had that was dope man to see so many young kids like i said with their hair screwed on straight even even the wild ones they still was like just wild but then it, they a lot of people came back mm-hmm. like came back and talked to us and just was like yeah man i'm trying to do this man but they don't really want to let me but i'm really trying to you know, I really just want to draw gym shoes all day, but they don't want to let me. You know, I, I, I still think that was dope too that they even had plans like. That. Yeah. Um. So I think I think one of the things we 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 talked about, um, our our listener base is is essentially our age group. So we we, I think I think our percentage is something crazy. Like ninety plus percent of us are falling at twenty five to thirty four age range. Mm-hmm. So we like removed as hell from uh, anything high school related and anything like that. So I feel like if if people don't have kids at age, exactly. they like they they some people forgot lost the touch or think things are so different. Um, like I guess I, I'm gonna ask you to describe your high school experience right now. Like how do you feel? Like just <laughs> junior year. Like you know, junior year people say, "Man, that was the year." Like, how how's your junior year going? How you feel about it? I would definitely say that um, since we have like technology and social media and stuff like that, it's way harder to like be how, how can I say it? like be formal. Like, um, I remember it was a couple of weeks ago, and um, I was at a basketball game, and I was with my boy Oscar. And he was supposed to go up to and talk to this chick, or whatever. And they had been texting for like two weeks or whatever. And, um, <laughs> I love these We're stories. So, yeah. I love so, so cute because like, it's so cute. So the whole thing is that it's like, oh, he's like, oh, I think I like her. And we're supposed to be doing this, this, this and that. And I was like, okay, cool. And um, I was like, is that her? And he was like, yeah. I was like, are you going to go over there and talk to her? Oh, no. 
I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> See? Exactly. This is my problem. Hold on. Like, I was like, why not? And it was like, me being a player, I already know. It's like a bunch of dudes around and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. like, I was like, hold on. Like, if this is me and I saw her and then she walks in and sits with her friends like that, I already am going to walk over there. And if you my boy and I didn't know, most likely I would have walked over there and talked to her. But the whole thing that I was trying to tell him was like, you need to go over there and talk to her so make sure, like, the other group of guys is around and know that y'all, y'all talking or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, no, it's okay, we texting. And then I kept, like, basically badgering him with it. Like, you need to go over there and talk to her. Like, this is dangerous. You about to lose this relationship. But um, he didn't listen to me, and she ended up going home with some other dude. So it was like, oh, oh God. You, see, 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 we called this here. What you said, he, he needs to go over there and talk to her. Yeah. We called that pissing on our tree. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. Yes, marking yes. your territory, oh, and that's yes, what he man. clearly had to do. All he had to do is go over there, handshake, you know, say, hey, how you doing? See, we, we addressed this on a, a podcast a few weeks ago. Go get her. Go get her. Hashtag <laughs> go get her. And we obviously we see the spirit of go get her is in you. But I, <laughs> I just don't understand, because I hear this story a lot from like even like the young guys that come hoop. How do you text somebody for like two weeks? So how did he get the number through DM? I'm assuming. No, he got connected through this other uh, one of my other, not necessarily friends, but like associates. Associate, right? That, that were classmate mm-hmm. that used to go to our school that doesn't anymore because he got in trouble. But um, I'm not gonna go into that. Yeah, it, it, it wouldn't need that. So a, a friend yeah. of a friend. He got yeah. connected through her. and was like, oh man, you should talk to this girl. So they started Snapchatting, and then they started, oh like, oh we texting and Snapchatting or whatever like that. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, have y'all went out to eat? Have y'all did this? Have y'all did that? I was like, oh, well, it's only been two weeks. I was like. Okay, have you went out to eat? Have you did anything? Oh, I mean, no. well, 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 I, I mean, in high school, like talking to somebody from two weeks, it's okay that if you didn't go out to eat, yeah. I would think. I mean, you know, because like a lot of people don't have like allowance and shit. You know? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I, I know, I know that struggle. Like, yeah, that, 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 yeah, the struggle, the struggle be real. Thing. So you know, like I can understand that. But what I don't understand, and maybe you can help me out because you go to oh, school with God. these people every day. <laughs> here he goes. How? Right here he like, goes. Like, like the face to face interaction. Mm-hmm. Like, why is that such a struggle? That shit is fascinating. It's man, so baby. fascinating to me. And, and I, I, I feel like us, we should actually get that more than anybody, because when we didn't have texting, mm-hmm. there were girls that we were scared to talk to. Like, oh, I, oh, so I have like, a whole litany, a right. whole li- oh, list of women I was yeah. scared to talk to. Oh yeah, my high school crush. If you out there still listening, I love you. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. My high school crush. You still out there? Your bad. Anywho, <laughs> your bad. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, the lack of face to face. The la- I, that that that's crazy to me. Like he's literally talking to this girl for two weeks, so they he probably sent some good morning texts. I'm assuming, mm-hmm. right? And yet <laughs> he sees her in person, and he doesn't talk to her. Did he text her? Why yeah, else? He, he, he was texting her, and she was what? like probably like three bleachers down. <laughs> I, 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 the okay. look on my face. I know, like with me. Okay. Now, this is my question to you. As the friend, didn't you, like, you should did you feel like maybe I should just go over there and, like, break the ice? I did. And he didn't come behind you? No. You need new friends, fam. I'm going to let you know now. <laughs> that, that, that's, just you down. that's just one homie. That's just one homie. Right. 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 Like, We've we been, we been together since grammar school. I got, like, a few from grammar school. So, like, that was one of my boys. I was like, make I'm trying to look out for him. Make sure you like, go ah. to different colleges. Yeah. <laughs> um, listen. You better start doing diamond and, push-ups and, or something. And Peter's trying to hang this this young man out the drive. I mean, because like, I because I've been there, but I I, but, but I put it like this: I would never text somebody for no, two I'm, weeks. I'm, I'm that's that's what I'm saying. saying. I'm, I'm that's not saying you thing. would, but because see, we like, go together. He, in my sixteen year old mind, we see, for two weeks. See, yeah, we I, together. But you gotta think about it. At this point, like. It's I'm, a new day like, and age. I know. Like I'm just no. I'm, I'm yeah, not even gonna say that. I'm gonna say think about how many people you texting. Right, so you literally texting everybody. That's true. Like, imagine how many people you would have been texting with the young. Like, it was five hundred in our class, right? Mm, yeah. So you would have probably been texting fact. probably about about three classes worth of people. You'd have probably, your contacts. You'd have had about a thousand numbers. Hey, look, <laughs> look, look, look. I'm not Don't text me for two weeks. I'm <laughs> not handing this young man a, 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 a grape van, a, a, a whatever you want to hold it, <laughs> whatever you want to hand out to him to help him. He was texting that girl exclusively for two weeks. They I was already planning nah. stuff they this, was gonna this do. Young, this he young saw man, that young man, that young lady, and he folded. He's gonna listen to this podcast. Because he is because his best friend, friend is, is on, his, friend on his, his homie is on here. Let yeah. me tell you something, young man. Young man. <laughs> young man. <laughs> young man. Don't you ever, 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 two weeks text somebody. Good morning, text. How you doing, text? Did you fail the test today? No, you didn't. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, don't you hey, ever, young man, don't be misguided. Right. Ooh. So don't 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 let these gentlemen put you on this path. <laughs> yeah. The path of what? I, sitting I, next to a woman? I I, I got a to question. watching your favorite Aaron. girl walk off right. with the water boy. Aaron. How many how many how many was he texting any other girls during this time? Oh, definitely. See, I'm saying, bro, he had options. Okay, so, okay, so, wait, wait, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Now, I got now, this. Now, I got this. So if he sent when he seen any of the other girls, did he ever approach them as well, or he stood down again? Okay, well, the problem about that was is that <laughs> that specific girl, it was like he was thinking that he was going to be able to score with her. Score. So, yes, yeah, score. Just I don't like, I mean, like, yeah, I know, we know, like, we know, we know. No, 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 you great. Because okay, okay, I know it's like a whole Dota channel. I like, no, I don't no, want to just be like cussing. So, no, 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 no. We, we talk real life issues, so you can say score. That's good. Go ahead. Okay, so like he was trying to score with her, and there was the whole thing is that they were talking about that. It was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to the bleachers in the football field. I'm like, what are you doing? It's cold outside. <laughs> but like, all these other problems and stuff, and it was just like, okay. But you need to go over there and talk to her. And the whole problem is that he didn't want to. And then it was like he, I, it was like it seemed like I was pestering him, and he got mad. And I was like, no, I'm trying to help you, but you like yeah. you, you're confusing this, and you're gonna fail in like this whole option. But the whole thing is that when we text somebody for like two weeks without like good morning or with good morning, we're not really like with that person. It's right. like more like we just talking. Okay. And then it's the whole context that we're talking, talking, and then like oh, we're actually in a relationship. Cause like now it's like girls and dudes nowadays is like they gotta blast their Snapchat. Or they Instagram with all these photos and stuff like that, and they could have been together for like a week. True. See, I, I, I see what what I feel like is happening, what essentially just happened, and where we misinterpret it because we old. See, it's like it's like it's like player shit is different, right? Mm-hmm. So it's different. Mm-hmm. So essentially, it sounds like he was trying to he was trying to go straight for the draws. I'm I'm he damn near pulled like he pulled a Dion. And, I, and, and, and I'm going to tell you why he pulled a Dion. It, it sounds like he was texting her because he, he only wanted one thing. And it seemed like he wanted confirmation that that one thing was going to happen. They they were talking like you know right. things that the um the other friend set them to up so they could do it. He's like I'm gonna bitch you on well then y'all gonna get into the. See, so it was like so, that's the reason see, why. Now, see this now, is now all like, this yeah, is all changing the different. game. Yeah, it's like he try- <laughs> The game has changed. <laughs> Look man, I'm I can't even describe this situation because we talk about high school students like yeah. let's just right you don't want to talk too much yeah now. yeah because now I see what the, the real setup was <laughs> this, this yeah. is too much yeah this is this, 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 this is the this, this is too much yeah. <laughs> I see what it was this wasn't this wasn't so some boy meets girl type romance nah. nah yeah this this nah. wasn't that yeah you know he was trying he was trying not to get popped off with a um you, you did, yeah, you did. Yeah. my yeah. problem my problem is that if y'all were talking and y'all were supposed to like do this legitly <laughs> How come like you want to go like like y'all gonna be in face interaction later? So it's right. like how come you wouldn't do that at that moment? Who else is in the gym? Uh, well, it was a um, it was a very game. teed basketball game, and uh, <laughs> yeah, there was lots of family and friends. But we were sitting in the student section at my school. How many other chicks was he texting? Was in the gym? No, none. None. Mm. Live your life, young man. Live <laughs> your life. But you know something? I'm, I'm, okay, okay. I'm sorry. We, we're riding this young man, but we got to be truthful. Not only did we have a show called Go Getter, we had a show about <laughs> adult confidence. Adult confidence. We mm. all didn't have this right. level of, hey, I can do whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Through him. Mm, like, I got great. that confidence. Yeah, I'm proud of you. <laughs> But we all didn't have this at that young age. So I got to stand. But we also didn't have social media. And we also wasn't getting in contact with our favorite women like that right. as much and yeah, as and, easy. And, 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 and we riding him hard. And, you know, yeah, we, I was a damn mute. Like, hey, you know, <laughs> yeah. so let you, me not front. And, and you know what I say? I always take it back to when when we did that career day. At, and the little boys in class that the girls thought was cute. This was an eighth grade class. And mm. a homie pulled up. His homie pulled up his Facebook. He had maxed out his friends. He had 5,000, right, in eighth grade. His Instagram was like 7,000. What? And, like, he was swole. Like, and he was like, yeah, you know, he's just sitting there. He felt like he was the man. And I'm like, I was was feeling like I was. Wasn't he, like, on house arrest or something? Yeah, he was on house arrest as well. Uh, (laughs) Live your life. (laughs) And, you know, his, his little homie was like plugged in like him and I'm sitting there like so y'all essentially just sitting in this classroom 
but y'all really like the kings on social media. And his homie's like, yeah, you know, they go places and girls is like, ooh, that's so-and-so. Can I get a pic with you so my gram could blow up? Like, if I was that age and that was me, Child, I would please. be uncontrollable. Child, please. <laughs> they, man, man, they could make a doorway big enough for my head to get I'll through. Be, <laughs> I'd be like Hakeem off Empire. I'd just be out of control. Out of control. Out of control. But see, that that goes back to the social media clout, too. You know what I mean? Like Clout boys. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> clout kills. Because, man, it's all false. It's all a false reality. But while we're living in this false reality, <laughs> I'm enjoying the fruit. Like oh, Dion said. <laughs> like Dion said, hey, man, ain't nothing you can tell me. Like you said, my friends are maxed out on Facebook, and I have 7,000 followers on Instagram. Try your drunk uncle. Don't try me. <laughs> right. And I, and I, right. So, okay. So that, that, that was interesting. How, how are, are the other portions of a junior? How, how is like the, the, the school environment, the, okay. the, the, the picking colleges? How is that? Oh God. Um, oh. <laughs> okay. So like, you, well, you know, I'm six four three oh six, and I'm a football player, but all this other crap. But, um, basically, the school environment I'm in, it's an all boys school, so everybody's just texting girls all the time, or whatever like that. <laughs> but um, it's a really good school environment. The teachers are like really helpful. Some teachers are terrible and awful, but I'm not gonna get into that. But um, it's like it's it's ups and downs. Of high school always, you know, you got racism here, discrimination there, because like it's 50 percent white and then probably 30 percent black and then 20 percent uh, Mexican. Okay. So with that being like the ratio or whatever, like um. We true. We try not to see like that. Uh, we try not to see racism or like race or whatever. We try to be like diverse and um, talk to multiple um, crowds. Like there isn't no jocks or nerds at our school or something like that. Okay. And um, the school scenario, I mean not scenario, but um, setting is more like they created like a monastery in the middle, so that um, there's no like legit windows going like outside. And it's like the school has its own campus. So when you look out the window, you look in basically at the school, and it's like <laughs> okay. you feel like you like, you feel like you at your own little place. And you're not just like on 79th, okay. but um, yeah. So it's like I really love my school. It's all it's always things that could be better, but <laughs> okay. Um, I definitely do like the setting. And when it comes to like colleges and stuff, um, th- um, I think every day. I mean, every Wednesday we have chapel, but like every month they do this specific thing where um, the seniors get like shouted out on like who got scholarships and stuff. Okay. And this is one dude who basically got a million dollars on all scholarships from all these different colleges and stuff. Right. And um, they shout out all these people that get scholarships. Mm-hmm. And um, it could be football or academic. And with me right now, I'm getting looked at for football. So um, okay. most likely I'm going to be going to Notre Dame. That's where I want to go. Okay. And um, I mean, it's always like different places I can look at and stuff. But um. Yeah, definitely. It's like for me, it's like I'm always getting like nearly taken out of class or like taken out of lunch. Like, hey, this is football coach. I want to go meet you and da, 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 da. But um, yeah, definitely, the school helps you with navigation on where you what colleges you want to go to. Um, I would definitely think that um, it's just my opinion. But um, education in America is not as um, as I would say career based as it was maybe beforehand because mm-hmm. now it's just like. They give you a general basis of subjects and then say, oh, are you good at this? Or are you good at that? And what if you don't know? What if there are certain classes that you didn't take for you to know? Like, I wouldn't have went into business if I didn't take an economics class with my dad in another room. Mm-hmm. But um, it's like, in that instance, they don't focus on career. So you can have a student that's like all A's, but then he gets to college or she gets to college and has no idea what field she wants to go into. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, at that point, it's like, well, what do you think you're good at? And if you're good at everything or you're bad at everything or you like here and there, it's like, should you go to your strengths or go do do what you want to go do? Right. And to me, it's like I do football, I'm in a business, and I'm in the poems, writing stories. So it's like if I go to another name, I'm going for um, economics and then screenwriting. Okay. So I'll be able to um, also direct and screenwrite my own movies, plays, whatever whatever the case is. And then I can also on the side do the rap game or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um. And then also I'll be playing football. I'll be a student athlete. So it's right. like for some people there's not that many um, options or there's not that many like things because like, me and my family have been pushing me and the mindset and my future in my head like all the time. I'm just focused on that all the time. But like it's a lot of students that aren't. Right. And they're like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like this is your senior year. Do you know what you're going to do now? Right. And they still say no. So it's like that's kind of confusing. And I think um, education in America has to be approved upon because definitely the SAT – 
ACT is rigorous and annoying, and I just had to take it yesterday. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I would definitely say if we see that it's not helping us as a country or as just like a legit unit, and we see that um, we're not even in like the top 10 of um, necessarily like country levels of good education, like we're below that, then I think that's a problem. Yes. I think it definitely is like if we go through this and then you got people that got doctorates that's living on food stamps and welfare, that's a problem. Mm-hmm, yeah. So it's like if we going through all this education and we paying all this money back to the government, that should be giving us to us, us. It's like I think it's a problem because like if I go to school, I do undergraduate, graduate school, and then I do maybe get a master's or a doctorate. How is it that I'm still get them below the poverty line. Yeah. Better <laughs> preach, young man. Better yeah. preach. Better yeah. preach. Y'all see why we say we like to see something so much. <laughs> right. Better <laughs> preach. Now, now, while I'm listening to all that, and you saying like we behind, so behind, like we ain't even top ten. So, how do you feel when Rahm Emanuel said what he said about he was thinking about uh, instituting where a kid had to have like a college acceptance letter to graduate? By assessment, a college acceptance letter, or um, trade. Or like a job um, right. acceptance. Yeah. Like, I, how, how do you all feel about that? I mean, me personally, I can't like speak for the whole youth community, but um, I feel that personally that um, like he is right in a certain aspect, but also there are people who still don't know what they want to do. They can go out and just get a job and then maybe go back to college, and not know what they want to do. You have people that's like me, fully know what their career is and what they want to do with their life and their path. And then you have certain people like, well, maybe I might just go to the military. I might just go be a fireman or policeman or something like mm-hmm. that. And it's like, um, it's kind of easy to be confused nowadays with our education system. And um, it's kind of easy for us not to know which way to go. So I do think in that certain aspect, it's good for him to create a, like a, it's needed that we need an acceptance letter to a college or know that we're going to have a job or know what we're going to do with our life because if not, then you have the youth running around not knowing what they're doing in their future, so then you're going to have the future not know what it's doing. True. And see, my thing, my whole thing with that was, <clears throat> like you said, it's not a bad idea. Like, the, the, the thought of it is great, but you have to put the proper resources in places for these people. So you just can't say, oh, you got to have a future. Well, first of all, if we if we all agree that the system is broken, mm-hmm. <laughs> we can't add anything on top of it. That's like saying, yeah, my car is broke down, but I expect to go 500 more miles. Right. You know what I mean? We got to get that car fixed. Then we can start saying what what places we're going to go, where we're going to drive to. So I feel like Rom needs to address the system as a whole. Then he can put those type of stipulations on top because right now CPS is broken. Like even in certain schools like – I look at it, they say kids aren't college ready. And I say that they're, they're saying this at early ages than ever before. Like, in third grade, they're, they're having, <laughs> they're telling parents, like, oh, yeah, he's not on par for college. Like, third grade. Right. Oh, you know what I mean? This kid can barely spell college, let alone he's not thinking about college right now. And some of us doesn't don't really get our whole school smarts up until certain years. I mean, some of us are just treading water until it's time to, okay, I got to get real. Like, with me, I didn't get real to my mm-hmm. senior year. Like I, I was, I was doing the bare minimum. Even though I could have been doing more, I was doing the bare minimum until like my the end of my junior senior year. So I feel like the system has to be fixed until he can put some more stipulations. Like you have to have this, this, and that. One hundred percent. And then you gotta think about the fact that um that all these black neighborhoods are based were based back in like the sixties and the seventies by segregation. And it's like mm-hmm. segregation was then the um process to why we have all these ghettos and hoods and why the education system around there isn't the best. Exactly. So why is it that we need to go to like not trying to like go against white people, but like why do we need to go be whitewashed? Yeah. We need to go to white areas and stuff like that to get a get good education. education. Yes. And it's like that's a problem with me because if you want to talk about education as a problem and, like, towards, like, the people or the citizens somewhat, then you have to give them resources, as you said, and, like, put them in the area that they are in. That's, like, my dream once I get older that I get enough money to um, go back and fix the necessarily the hoods or the ghettos in our country. Oh, yeah, that's definitely, my, that's definitely one of my goals I'm pushing towards right now. Yeah, we speak. yeah I, I, think, I think one of the things that was interesting to combine what you were saying and which, uh, what, what both of you guys were saying about ROM and um, education being kind of ambiguous. Um, you know, I, I always tell this story. Um, when you look at education in other countries, um, a lot of times they damn near determine that track for you so early. 
And one of the one of the keys in that, you know, they do that one based on economics. And also as well, it kind of lets the parents know that they have to be serious as part of my friend, serious as fuck about your development early. Mm -hmm. Like you cannot slack because if you look up and like first said in third or fourth grade, your kid is below level. Um, If your kid is, is even in China and people love the champion China system. Your kid will be assembling Apple products. No, no bullshit. Your kid will be in a factory, and that's why you look at those countries and and those kids who work in those factories. And you look up now, and those kids are running around. They commit suicide. It's 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 really crazy when you look at it. Um, versus the flip side of the whole thing, where some of those kids are are marked early, and say this kid is going to be on this track. Um, you know, like. Um, I always tell the story of one of a friend I had at an internship named Dimitri. And Dimitri is from Russia. And, you know, Dimitri, they put code, the computer code. And, you know, now they damn near tell you, regardless of what you're doing in life, if you learn how to write code right now, you can get a job making $120,000. Mm. Right? But they put code in front of Dimitri because they recognized that he was bright. They, I think he said he first saw code at four. Mm. And start writing code in fourth grade. So when they start putting that stuff in front of you as early, like they earmark you, it's it's weird because on one hand you're like, well, this could be great, but on the other hand, it takes away the freedom in the system. Um, you know the the like, what does that mean for a late bloomer? Mm. You know, what does that mean for somebody who pop up in seventh grade and this kid is a genius? Right. Like you know, it's. It's such a, a slippery slope. Um, <laughs> slippery <laughs> slope. A slippery slope. A slippery slope. I'm going to mess around and watch that movie tonight. <laughs> That's yeah. what we got here. Good movie. Dope. Uh, dope. Oh, yeah. Dope was yeah. awesome. Dope, yes. dope was awesome. <laughs> um, so one one thing about, man, you, you mentioned, um, you know, football. Man, how, how do you balance football and academics? Oh my God, <laughs> it is utterly wild because then it's like um, I always like do this comparison to um, like when a girl complains like I don't talk to her as much. I mean like I'm in a relationship right now. I love you, um, Brianna. But, um, <laughs> good job, man. Good job, good boy. Job. You're learning. Oh, boy, You're learning. Get yeah. your brownie points. <laughs> so um, I remember like when I was like in like the whole single stage and everything like that, and it's like more um, well, how come you're not texting me or how come you're not doing this? I was like, do you understand? I'll wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I have to leave out the house by 7. I have to get to school at 8, and then it's probably a nine-hour day. I'm not leaving the school until probably 7 because I have to stay after football practice to watch film on the last game. Oh, yeah, then I'm doing that through Monday through Friday, and then on Saturday. Oh, yeah, Friday is the actual game. Then Saturday is the morning that we do an extra practice. Sunday is my only day off. So if you're wondering why I'm not responding, it's because I'm either sleep, tired, or doing something. <laughs> And it's like, when it comes to school and academics, it's like, so you want me to get um, a 3.5 while I'm barely going on six hours of sleep, and I'm staying up to probably like 12 to 1 or 2 doing papers, writing, or just doing homework in general while reading. Every night I have to read, and then it's like, I like reading, but it's like, school making me not like reading because I'm reading <laughs> books that I don't like reading and stuff, but like, right. it's understandable for like, oh yeah, well they set the statistic, and then it's like, the reality is... If I'm doing another sport that's as rigorous as football or basketball or baseball or something like that, and you have to set focus on so many different things, it's a lot of times you can be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And I realized um, I was doing really good when I was in football. Like when I was in football, my grades were up and everything like that. It was more like my grades went down when I came complacent um, after football was over. Mm -hmm. So it was like when I'm doing lifting and stuff like that, I was like, oh, man, like I, I miss like hitting people in the face. But like how come I'm not doing this? How come I'm not doing that? Like that? I'm like I'm not used to this main routine. So it's like I understand for a lot of people who do multiple sports that they're always busy and they do well when they're busy. But, like, academics right now, high school is very hard to do while playing a sport. Mm. You have to have, like, a specific mindset to do it. Some people may be able to flow through it, and it's like it's just easy motion for them. Yeah. But it's like, for me, if I know, like, I play left tackle, D tackle, and um, DN, um, I know that if I, I'm supposed to be focused on this one play at the game, Am I going to be focusing on the game? Am I going to be nervous about the game or the fact that um, 
that that day I got a test. It was like I'm studying on the test, and then I'm studying on this play. Then I'm doing all these different things, and it's like sometimes you can get stressed too much. But I would definitely think that um, it's hard and rigorous, but it pays off in the long run when you get a scholarship. Yeah. yeah. What What was What was uh What was your girlfriend's response <laughs> when, when you told her like, "Yo, like I got all this going on." What oh no! Honest? Like with Brianna, it's it's I can't even tell you how smooth it is with her. I mean, with all the other girls, it's just all these problems and like, why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing that? Like, why are you whining? I'm like, why are you whining? But um, it's like all these snap. problems. It's like you better snap. <laughs> With Brianna, like I did snap a lot of times, but um, like but with Brianna, it's just it's so smooth with her, and it's like I didn't, I never had to explain that because I'm telling her like, oh, I'm so tired from football, or I'm so tired from lifting. And she's like, okay, I understand, go to sleep. I was like, really? I was like, yeah, you just told me you would go to sleep now. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm like, when it was when I'm with her, it's like everything falls into motion. It's just everything is like the soothing and simple. Whether it's like complicated with other chicks, and I have to go on that rant explaining everything I have to do in a day, and the whole thing is that she plays volleyball, so she understands the pain. Okay. And it's like, oh yeah, so you, you you play volleyball, this, this, and that. And then you also are a cookie, you wanna be a culinary chef, you wanna go to this, this, and that. Mm. So it's like, your mind has to be stretched. And her grades are way better than mine, but anyway. <laughs> um, like, so she's being stressed too, just as almost as me. Yeah. So it's like, and then all the stress and pressure, um, and, pressure and um, the nervousness of like being a student athlete and then having to yeah. go to college and maybe do that for me. And then for her to go to culinary school and like go volleyball, it's like for us, definitely, I don't ever have to go and rant with her and tell her, like, I'm tired. It's like, right. I think communication is key in every single relationship that oh, could be. Oh, shit. Hold on, man. Duh, they relationships <laughs> sound more adult than, like, most right. of those yeah, relationships. Yeah, I, can't even I, was this like, I was like, I was listening like, listen. I can't get this thing. I, like, I, is I, he 17 I got, or 27? I got to call a timeout. Right. I got to call a timeout for this reason alone. One, so it sounds like the most understanding girl won. Right. Yeah. And, and, and then the second part of this is, we got a lot of listeners who are listening to this show, right? Mm-hmm. Of both sexes that are like, I wish my relationship like that. And they over 30. They 35. <laughs> right, and man. they sitting there listening to now the show Now, how can like, this young lady understand that this man got stuff going on in his life <laughs> right. and he don't need to be bothered? And yet, and still, there's women walking around every day seeing a man go to work overtime with kids. <laughs> with kids. And then be like, well, you ain't text me. I'm tired. <laughs> right. With kids, with a stressful boss. Right. Uh, he underpaid, and you like, where my time at? And his lady like, ah, oh, you know, yeah. I understand. She baby. understand. Like it's because she ain't been around no other women to taint her image. Yet. Where she at? We need to bring. We right. Have we should have her on the show too. We need she to have said, y'all both on the she show. She said communication is key. That mean, ladies. <laughs> we should we should know about your feelings. We should have to see it on Facebook. Yeah, we still go through this at age thirty. Yeah, you don't yeah. know if your girl mad till you see a Facebook status and you got a text like, "Was that aim for me?" Don't worry about <laughs> uh, it. I see how it is. It's like, what what you mean by that? Oh, look at my Snapchat. Yeah, like, why? There you go. yeah. How yeah. come you can't just tell me? Yeah, it's rough like that. Yeah, we we still go through that to, to this day, bro. All they really be wanting is some wings fried hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um. I, I, you know what? Okay, I don't have no words for what he just said. <laughs> uh, so, uh, my my my, do y'all got any other questions? I I, I feel like Aunt I feel like Aunt definitely had Aunt questions. Has any questions. Well, before we get to the Aunt section, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, my question actually was. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> when you said Notre Dame, I felt like that was so dope, bro. Like, what what made you pick Notre Dame out of school? Like, I mean. That's what I was, um, Definitely, I mean, I, I mean, I've been getting yeah. looked at by like a lot of colleges lately, yeah. and um, it's always like I've basically been going to Notre Dame ever since I was in seventh grade. Mm-hmm. My um coach knew Chris Zorch, and of course, Chris mm-hmm. Zorch Chris played Zorch. in Notre Dame, yeah, so we would always it. get tickets to the Blue versus Gold game, mm-hmm. and um, I'll be be going there, and it's like, oh man, I'm gonna I'm like a stadium. This is like this is like the closest I've ever been to like full on like NFL like sitting in a real stadium so it's yeah. like I always like was grateful for it and then like freshman year these two old white dudes sitting out um, the parking lot and stuff watching me practice and stuff and it's like oh well, who are they I don't know they won't talk to the coaches but they keep looking at you I'm like <laughs> what sophomore year they're sitting in the stands junior year they actually come up and talk to me and say Aaron well, we want you to come down for a game day Ooh. and it it was like a big realization because everyone here probably thinks I'm big. Yeah. I don't think I'm big at all because like I went down to the ga- game day and it was like we had the whole experience oh, there, the yeah. whole tour. Yeah, um, 
<laughs> uh, I was, I'm 6'4", 306. I'm keep saying that. Mm-hmm. It was a dude there that was 6'7", like 350. I'm looking like, oh, well, how you <laughs> doing, brother? I'm looking up like, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. So then it's like, I see this other dude. Like, he looked like a tree, but the dude's 6'9". So it's like, oh, so I have to compete with all these people that's probably higher than me. Right. It's like, oh, when I go back to school, I'm the biggest. And it's like, oh, yeah, you're not. Exactly. So it's like, I got to, uh, th- that realization pushed me more to, like, work even harder, try to focus so on that and stuff. Complacent. Right. So it's like, after, after, like, this junior year, it's been crazy. I, I loved it. It's had its problems and stuff. Like, the season wasn't so good. But right. anyway, yeah. um. You'll be good. You'll end up being six, 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 seven when it's all said and done. Hopefully. Because, I mean, like, you go to the league, and it's like um, you got Aaron Donald, who's like 6'1", six, 6'2", six, or something like that. Yeah. And um, he's completely changed the interior defense game. Yeah, as a he's like too. the best D-lineman in the league. Right, and they yeah. saying that he already going to the Hall of Fame. And it's like, that's <laughs> wild. And to me, it's like, oh, I've been practicing this stuff for, like, how long? And it's like, I'm going to get smaller people. So for him, he's going against, like, giants. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I got to get on that level with his determination. Like, I always, like, um, compare my – I won't compare myself, but I always, like, look at um, football players as role models and stuff like that as in the football aspect. But I also believe that um, when it comes to, like, going to Notre Dame and everything like that, you have to have a certain mindset on, like, what you want to do because, like – I could um, I could have been like, well, I want to go to Penn State, who's also recruiting me in Syracuse, who's also recruiting me and stuff like that. Hmm. But it's like me and my mom researched Notre Dame, and I was thinking about it for so long. <laughs> I was I was shaking my head to Penn State. Sorry, sorry. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's still gonna, fresh. Yeah. It's still it's fresh. Still. Definitely one hundred percent not going there. <laughs> Nobody feeling on my butt none. But um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so when we looked up Notre Dame and they said they showed that they had like a great undergraduate business school, and that's what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. They also had on the side a great screenwriting and directory school. So it was like, mm-hmm. oh, so they got best of both worlds for me. Right. So it's like, if I go there, they also have like creative writing classes that I can take. And they basically got what I got. And I go to all these other D1 colleges and stuff. Oh, yeah, we want you to play football. Do you got a director's class? Oh, no, deuces. So it's like, what, what, what do you want me to do, really? Right. Mm-hmm. But um, like yeah. I always try to align it with what I want to do first, because then football has always come secondary. I know it's a big factor in my life, but I always want to see it as this, um, I don't want to always just see it as my ticket to get to college or just use right. that to get a free education. But it is something that I truly love, and I'm very grateful that I'm good at it. Yeah, I I, I recently went to Notre Dame, and and you know. The way I know in Catholic school, they always tell you about Notre Dame. Like, that's that's your, like, destination, right? Like, so that's on the pedestal. Like, if you get to play with Notre Dame, boy. And I remember, like, I, I literally just went there in August. And I was like, yo, this place is incredible. Like, on the, as a grown man, I was like, yo, this place campus is Campus is amazing. The campus is amazing. Touchdown, Jesus. Them. I was oh. looking at Touchdown, Jesus. Like, touchdown yo, Jesus. this is, yeah, right. Touchdown, Jesus is a real thing. Like, and you, you could literally just pull up and walk around the campus. And those campus visits, they was taking us. And, and when I went into uh, the church right there on mm-hmm. campus, I was looking and I was like, I'm pretty sure all this gold is real. It uh, is. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I was just looking like I'm around so much money and influence right now. <laughs> like I was just, I was just like in shock. And and I'm we we got to go there for a company like retreat in August. I was like, gee, like I asked him again. I need to go on the Notre Dame tour again. You know, and and, and it, it does wow you. Um, and, and you kind of see that like some of the campuses like. You know, which is kind of funny because I'm like, if, if if Notre Dame recruit you, I know all the other schools are really interested. Maybe they feel like they don't got a shot. Yeah, uh, but, yeah I, I was told that by the Miami, Ohio coach. Yeah. He came to see me. He was like, oh, well, I know you're getting recruited by Notre Dame, but um, if you come to us, we're going to talk this out. I was like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And every, yeah. every, everybody else, like, gets scared. Like, they're like, damn. Notre Dame's yeah. definitely going to get this kid. I mean, people get scared of Ohio State. Oh, yeah. uh, as, as, as they, they should. should. As they, they should. Ohio, Ohio, Ohio State. Alabama. So, as they so should. Yeah. Do we think of that Notre Dame is America's team? I, I want to consider that. I think, like, when on the college level. No, no, as college. On the college level. I would say that. Only only reason why I say not, that. Not our generation. No, no, I'm not 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 um, not because of how good they are, but I'm saying like this. All right, you think about it. everyone watches the Cubs because they come on WGN. Mm-hmm. Notre Dame wasn't in a conference for ever, right? They, they still football, they still in the conference, football wise. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> and and yeah. they still televised games every week. But they're not like an America's team like they were in the late '80s and early '90s. Yeah, but I, 
neither was Dallas. I mean, they're in a stage of rebuilding. Like, right, right, neither now. was Dallas, but that was still a, that's always been American team. They haven't won a playoff game since. Yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like the influence is always going to be, mm-hmm. and that's yeah, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, you should be. They still, I mean, it's still going to be Notre Dame, just like it's yeah. USC. And just like it's Texas, yeah. no, and, and yeah. college football is so many different places. You know, places like that, like the you U? said, Ohio State, the, the U. Uh, you we know, fell off <laughs> too much. Hey man, look if uh, if if UCLA happens to call you, <laughs> <laughs> they have a terrific film school. Oh yeah, my god, like you have nice. no, I'm serious. That's that's what John Singleton went. I mean Harvard and. Uh, Harvard I thought and was Princeton. They just, I, I thought I said USC. You said UCLA. Oh, yeah. yeah you said UCLA. Yeah. Oh, yeah, USC. Yeah, yeah, but Harvard and Princeton came to me, like, through email and stuff. And was like, hey, we want you to come on to college visit. We want you to come um, down and stuff like that. And um, uh, they did. They, they, they were basically telling me, like, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we want to recruit you. And I was like, I'm like, well, you're Ivy League. I don't know if I could, like, take your classes and possibly get a C. So it's <laughs> like. Oh, man. I'm sure, sure you could. I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure you could. We're striving, young brother. Let me let me ask you one one um, question before we. I know we're gonna wrap up soon. As a young person, what are a couple of things that you feel like adults totally misread your generation on? Like they, we just totally like screw up on. Like we just get it wrong. Mm. We just don't um, get you wrong. I definitely think that sometimes like the um, aspect of our pressure. Because it's like, um, like we got to deal with the whole social life, and then when you get to school, like you got to do this, this, and that. You got to be such a popular person. I think that can assume a lot of people. It definitely did in my first few years in high school, and um, I think that um, adults can always like. I think the best thing that adults can do is like be familiar with like some things that um, younger kids might um, like be for um, like like or be familiar with, like what kids say, like to do, or um, what's their problems. Because it's like I think I truly believe. If we can relate and understand to someone, then you will best be able to um, talk to somebody. And it's like that can go through like parents to have, raising their kids better, and then I can go through um, teachers teaching kids better and stuff like that. If they can relate to them, then definitely. I think that um, a lot of times when we listen to music, a lot of us, like a majority of us, can get like the um, the whole stigma, like oh y'all just listen to all trap music and it's all this other problems and stuff like that. And that can be like through all like all races and stuff like that, and it's like. Ultimately, it's always like gonna be like them like few little wallflowers. Just like, well, no, nah, I don't listen to that. So no, nah, I don't listen to, like like me. But I definitely think that adults can um get confused on like the, the pressure that we have to face. They can get confused on um the whole sexual thing that we get like so amped up about. Like, oh, I, I got to be a man or something like that. Mm-hmm. If I do that, like they can get confused about that. I like I think it transfers down generations and stuff. But like. Definitely, and then how we view politics sometimes, because mm-hmm. I feel a lot of times that, um, if I talk about Trump or I talk about um, how I see the education system or how Flint got bad water, all these different things, I immediately get the stigma, well, oh, you're the only one that thinks that. Whereas, like, I go to lunch, and that's what we talk about every single day. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I think a lot of times that um, even though, like, some of my friends aren't in the scholarship, some of them are, it's like a lot of times um, adults can get confused with Younger minds have like the good um, setup to um, achieve, but more in the future, or that they have the good mindset to um, accomplish more. And it's like to me, I always believe like even as a younger as a young person, age is just a number, and knowledge doesn't have a comparison to when it comes to that. Mm. I, 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 you know what? Be, be, before we I'm have you, do, before we have you do the piece, I I got a question to ask you. Just just I have to tell me. Tell me what's in your musical rotation. What's in my musical oh, rotation? Yes. What's oh, in yes. your musical oh, rotation? Oh God, let me just go on YouTube. Oh man, I can um, my best start up. All right, hit up YouTube. Yeah, so I can definitely say, other than like this game videos and stuff. Uh, let's go. And if my Wi-Fi kick in, yep. Um, no, that's basically. Let's continue watching. Hold on. Okay, yeah. Here we go. I listen to Logic. I listen to Twenty Seal. He's like a beat maker. I listen to the Spinners. I'll be around. Um, I listen to Al Green, Love and Happiness. Yeah. Listen to Joe, uh, J Cole. I listen to the Four Tops. Um, ain't no woman like the one I got. I listen to um, For the Fam <laughs> by a Mill. Young man. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to Kendrick Lamar. I listen to Logic, um, Twenty Seal, Marvin Gaye, and Sammy um, Torelli. Ain't no mountain high enough. Right. I listen to a lot of old music because yeah. that's why I was I grew up around like old jazz, old blues, and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. So whenever it, like, um, do you know the um, group called Alabama Shakes? Yeah. I listen to them too. 
Um, I probably listen to everything except like out of side of like country or um, metal and stuff like that, like hardcore metal. Because okay. like if I want to rock out, um, you can easily turn on like um, Mask Off or Future or something like that. But I feel yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> if I want to rock out. I mean, like, a lot of times, it's like, if I'm just dancing with my friends, I'm just going to hit that, yeah. yeah. So it's like, I feel like that's the one that's needed. But, like, if I'm in a zone or I'm trying to concentrate, I'll go and listen to Logic. Or if um, I'm feeling a little, like, revolutionary-wise, i go listen to J. Cole or Kendrick. Mm-hmm. And um, if I just feel like being an all-out um, like MC, I'll go back and listen to Big Daddy Kane and um, yeah. Jay-Z and Kane when they were beforehand. Yeah. So it's like, I listen to that stuff then and now. But um, definitely, I think my music range is so wide, it's ridiculous, because right. I can listen to Al Green. I can go on days just listening to Jimi Hendrix. That's like, Jimi Hendrix is like one of my favorite artists. All right. And um, yeah. I listen to a lot of old music, like Al Green, Bill Weathers. Um, <laughs> I forgot this one dude, the dude that wrote Mrs. Jones. Oh, uh, um, Billy Paul. Yeah. I listen to yeah. Billy Paul. So it's like, I listen to all these different things. You can ask my dad in the other room right now, like, I listen to all this crazy <laughs> stuff because of them. And okay. it's, um, yeah, so it's like... Listen to all this different stuff so I can go from listening to that, then go right to listening to rap and stuff like that. Yeah. And then it's like um, I always use music in certain um, scenarios. So, like, if I'm just chilling, I'll listen to Logic or I'll listen to Al Green and Love and Happiness or I'm just trying to jam out. I'll probably, like, listen to Mask Off or something like that. If I'm trying to, listen, like, hit the folks and stuff, be dabbing. <laughs> I, I listen to, like, <laughs> Future or Drake or something like that or um, Travis Scott, supposedly. Yeah. But, um, like, if I'm yeah, definitely... Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, like, I, I can also, like, rock out to Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, and other old music. So it's like, for me, it's always in this scenario because then for football, I got to get pumped up so then right. I can let go back and um, listen to DMX or, yeah. like, somebody else and go, like, um, yeah. So like, I can listen yeah. to all these different stuff for different scenarios, so that's what it really is. But, see, that's cool, you know what I'm saying? And it, it, it's crazy, though, because I remember I... Th- at the, at the summit, I said Rick Ross, and they were like, Rick Ross? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> but that's dope that you listen to everything. Cause I, me too. You know, I was like that as a kid growing up. You know, my very wide variety of music. I listen to everything. Reggae, rock, uh, oh, yeah. definitely Dusty. You know, I got playlists from every decade, 70s, 80s, 2000s, 90s, that I made myself. So, oh, uh, crap. I listen to Fleetwood Mac, too. Uh, so I haven't got oh, that yeah. Far, but. Yeah, I love Fleetwood Mac, too. The Chain, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I love I love um, Aromos Aromos That's definitely A cold track But look Give me Johnny Cash No uh, <laughs> Listen to Johnny Cash Yes sir Oh yes, yes sir. I, I, you know, Hurt was the business Yeah Here's, here, here's what we are gonna do Cause we could We could have a A whole episode About that Sorry y'all Y'all to live with it Um So you got a piece That you did I got multiple pieces You got multiple pieces so we uh what's it's it's eight o'clock. So we 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 officially overtime. Yeah. But you 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 got a piece that you did. You wrote a piece for us. Yeah. Okay. I wrote okay. um. I got. Oh, I was. I thought I was supposed to tell y'all like three or four of them or something. Like okay. That. But um, is, is it cool if I can tell you all of them? Um, we're gonna see because we got time. Like it's usually it's somebody else at us. Let's let's do. Okay. Do this. Give us two. Give us two. Okay. Um, I'll tell you televised and do we know how to truly love? All right. Cause like I would, cause you heard the other one I said. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know that was good. But um, this is <laughs> okay. This is called televised. Okay. This broadcast is being televised. I'm asking the human race to open their minds and look closely and see between the lines, see what the world could be instead of how badly need to be refined. People have been asking since the beginning of the time when we talk to God, why do we get, why do we look to the skies? The truth is something hard to be recognized, so when I show it to the world, everyone is so shocked and surprised. Today, money is stronger than blood ties. People waste their mo- waste their time watching reality TV. That's fake people's lives. 90% of all media is controlled by six companies. I'm telling you, it's all propaganda. It's fabricated, nice-looking lies. You hear what I'm saying? Think you can visualize or realize the real lies? When our figure in our imagination called peace dies, I'm afraid our society might capsize. By continuing to put aside and search for the real prize. My dream seems to be on a steady ride, and when I felt the night, I looked into my mother's eyes. She told me I would never be a failure, that one day I would get my own Sue Stelliot, and that this isn't a single, but this is only a small trailer. Time has been going by so fast, but I must focus because my future is so large and vast. I'm not doing this for the cash because so many of out there do it, but they are trash. For the path I walk, a thousand couldn't, a million wanted, and the next hundred shouldn't. The one will prevail and escape this place, the ghetto, a.k.a. the white created black hell. Only a handful will follow my trail and only someone be bold enough to tell my tale. I'm the wordsmith, the man, not the myth. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. 
Let's go. Let's keep yeah, it coming, okay, brother. Yeah, Let's yeah, keep bro. it coming. I got to breathe. I'm with it. Yeah, All right, right. Yeah, yeah. Get your own breathe, man. Lyrical okay. exercise. <laughs> this is called Do We Know How to Truly Love? Our generation dealing with pain like it's an enjoyment. I'm still wondering what's wrong with America's employment. I'm not arrogant or flamboyant. I don't boast. I'm just looking for the truth. And I'm asking if some of these rappers really wrote down what they say in a booth. I'm, act, I'm constantly in the lab because it's in my mind. I believe that the youth has to stay connected to the times and know that our people has always been in bonds. We can't let our knowledge be confined to the fake stuff that they be telling us. Like, how come they're never, um, how come, oh crap. Like, how come they never want to talk about how we have to sit in the back of the bus? It's like now they saying, well, you're free. What's the fuss? And if any one of us try to tell the truth, they'll bring the cops and say, that's close enough. But they quick to point the finger, say we in trouble, say we the problem. But when cops are killing us in cold blood, they only get a misdemeanor. The sad truth is that we would continue to be th- be that niggas or go on or going to keep being niggas when it's the only figure that they see, even when they eat and sleep and are watching TV. So please take it from me. Life being black is not an easy breeze. We get extra problems and fees just based on our skin, not knowing we bleed the same blood. We're all family to the one up above. How come we all can't learn how to truly love? The only race we are is human. We can't look at each other like we're all mutants. I thought dehumanization wasn't human. God created men and women to love, not hate. Or destroy what he did create. The only way our society doesn't collapse is that if we understand and relate. How come we can't truly love? How come we can't understand pain and then compensate? Is love a real human trait or a self-destruction our fate? Woo. Aaron, thank you so much, brother. So dope. I appreciate you for coming. Thank you for thank you for everything. I, I, I feel like your episode, I feel like you gave more game out than uh, people. <laughs> gave out right, you, you gave out a lot of game. And I feel like people are going to have to listen. Like, man, this, this dude gave out a lot of game. Boy, Some people are going to feel a certain way because they're going to be like, man. This young dude gave. Uh, they gonna feel a way about following your advice because you're. Yeah. <laughs> they gonna they, say they, when a book comes. Right, but they, they gonna, gonna have to go line. get with it. Cause we, to line. Right, because because we we co-signed it. We co-signed we definitely it. Definitely, yeah. we we're definitely vouching. Dude, we we wish you all the success in yes, life. Yes, and, and and I definitely think you got all the tools to do whatever you want to do, whatever that is. Thank you. I'm truly impressed by you, brother. Any words from you fellas? I'm just happy to see. Glad to see, proud to see, whatever other good word to see, a well-rounded young man with his head on his shoulder, very well-rounded. You know, from his music, his taste in music, to he's a six-four D lineman who does spoken word poetry. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's very well-rounded, man. That that's great to see. The world is yours. Take it. Right. Period. Aaron, no foreplay show. We out. No foreplay. Okay. <laughs>